can't escape air pollution. It's there, and everybody is exposed to it. The advantage of, of, of tools or knowledge about air pollution is that as an individual, you can then make better decisions on to which routes you take, where you live, where you work, knowing what the levels are. You will click once, uh, you will locate your point of origin, uh, navigating on the map as you would normally uh, a Google map, and then you, you navigate to your destination and, and click a second time. And the system will uh, automatically compute three routes for you, the shortest in blue, uh, in green you will have the least exposure to pollution route, and in red you would have the one on, over which statistically you least you likely to encounter the least traffic. Anything that is in black actually represents a high level, not just for Montreal itself, but even comparing that with other Canadian cities. So here we're zooming onto a smaller portion of downtown, and that's really to illustrate the spatial variability in levels of ultrafine particles. I mean, you could be cycling on one street that is relatively highly polluted in the red and the black, and then you move onto another block, just one street parallel to it, and you could tremendously incre decrease your exposure. We know that the streets that have high volumes of, tra of traffic are going to have higher levels of air pollution. But what is discovered also is not just the volume of traffic, it's the composition. The composition is very important. The amount of SUVs within the traffic actually does lead to an increase in air pollution. So if you have 100 cars on one street and then on another street you have 90 cars but 70 of them are SUVs and 20 of them are passenger cars, you're actually going to see higher levels of air pollution. The proportion of trucks and all kind of trucks, so not really just the heavy trucks but just you know, passenger trucks, the delivery trucks, these have higher levels of emissions and do contribute disproportionately. We measured a wide range of pollutants. All of them were measured using portable uh, instruments, portable monitors that were installed in the panniers of bicycles and connected by tubing going along the frames and then, you know, propping up to maybe a breathing uh, level. So we're focusing on some gaseous pollutants that are known markers for traffic emissions, such as nitrogen dioxide, NO2. We looked at uh, particulate pollutants. Obviously, we can't cycle along every single street in Montreal, and that's why for our app, we're basically using data from fixed sensors in order to infer air quality throughout the entire island. As it is, this app is based on data that was, uh, that was collected a, a little while back, but given the, the current trends in, in, in sensors becoming smaller and more affordable, it is not hard to envisage a, a future where people can actually contribute data in real time and make this app uh, even more pertinent to day-to-day -day decisions. For healthy individuals, it's always good to be able to decrease your exposure, but it's particularly important for people who are vulnerable, people who are asthmatics or with a cardiovascular illness. These very small changes in your trajectory, uh, small changes in exposure day after day might be very important uh, over a lifetime.